Unfortunately, owing to situations beyond our control, the following Science Of has been delayed till 2022. From everyone here at the Science Of, I apologise for the inconvenience. To make up for it, please enjoy Keanu for the following 10 minutes. You're breathtaking. You're all breathtaking. Hello everybody, and welcome to the Science Of, where today, we'll be taking a look at some of the science behind Cyberpunk 2077. A game which has experienced delays upon delays, crunch periods and multiple setbacks. But was it all worth it? Well, the game's been out for a couple of days, so I'm sure you'll be able to tell me in the comments down below. Now, there's nothing more iconic to the sci-fi genre than the way it seamlessly mixes technology with human anatomy. We see this in-game with characters with bionic limbs, implants and even bionic eyes. But how would this work in the real world? And in fact, are there any real world equivalents to these technologies? And furthermore, how can these technologies be used to help you in your gaming adventures? Prosthetics have been around for a very long time, with the first prosthesis being found in Egypt from 950 BC. And believe it or not, it wasn't a prosthetic arm or leg, but a prosthetic toe. This may seem like a weird thing to have a prosthesis of, but what you need to remember is that in Egypt, the big toe was a necessity for wearing traditional Egyptian sandals. It was extremely crude, having no points of articulation, but it was made to be practical rather than to have any specific uses, mainly being a sign of position. After these, we saw the first primitive versions of prosthetic limbs. Wooden legs introduced by 16th century Dr. Ambois Paré, which were rather crude, but effective. Hinged prosthetic hands and legs with working knee joints. Then greater advancements came with the Second World War, which introduced the use of plastics and other composite materials. Of course, in the modern world, we have all sorts of different prostheses for arms and legs. But they may be more advanced than you would imagine. Advancements in 3D printing and biometrics have allowed us to develop more and more advanced prostheses to enhance the lives of amputees. With 3D printing allowing for significant advances in the prosthetic coverings, which can help restore symmetry to the amputee's silhouette, help rebuilding confidence and mental health. One of the most recent developments in limb prosthetics is the Open Bionics Hero Arm. These are the most impressive prosthesis I've seen, allowing the amputee to not only have a replacement for their missing limbs, but also one which they have a certain level of control over, with insane levels of articulation. Users of these futuristic arms have a never before seen level of control and dexterity over not only their grip, but also their fingers having control over the speed and force used by them, as well as being able to rotate their wrists. Now, this might not be as dexterous as the sort of bionics we see in game, but it does have multiple different grip modes including fist, hook, tripod and pinch. But this is not to say of course that they are perfect prosthetics, for example, there is a delay between the signal being sent to the fingers and the motor's movement, which you wouldn't get in an able-bodied arm. But advances in these technologies will only improve and keep the prosthetic getting better and better in the future. And of course, arms aren't the only limb prosthetics available. You can also get prosthetic legs, but these are slightly less common in sci-fi, with the most prominent examples in recent years coming from Kingsman The Secret Service. And even then, the prosthetics were sewn as less sci-fi than you'd expect. Well, minus the razor-thin blades on the heels. Now of course, these prosthetics come in all shapes and sizes, just like the arm prosthetics, as there are multiple areas where the limb can be lost, and these can range from a hip joint replacement, down to a lower leg attachment from the knee, down to just foot prosthetics. But that's not all. You can then have prosthetics to help you with everyday tasks with there being leg prosthetics to help with all manner of spores, from cycling prosthetics that grip the pedals, to specifically designed prosthetics for golf, basketball and even swimming. But you may be wondering, why there needs to be such a wide variety of prosthetics for all of these sports, rather than just one prosthetic to suit all of them. Well, let's take a look at one of these prostheses and see what makes them so suitable for their chosen sports, and why they might be awful for another. Blades are a lower extremity or transfemoral prosthetic that was specifically designed for running. Given that for years, amputees had had to use normal walking prosthetics for more vigorous exercise, 
which wasn't really up to the task. The carbon fiber blade is flexible and imitates the effect of a calf muscle during running. There are no electronics involved. It's purely based around the conversion and release of elastic potential energy to kinetic energy. When a runner's foot hits the ground, the blade compresses around a bend at the bottom, like a spring, and this stores elastic potential energy. The spring then rebounds to push the runner forward, using up to 90% of the potential energy, with only 10% being wasted in the form of heat and sound energy. In fact, when these blades were first released, they were considered unfair in official competition, and they're actually banned in any Olympic level events. Despite it being proven later that metabolic factors such as oxygen volume in the lungs, heart rate and running economy were the same as any able-bodied runner. Since then, studies have continued to see if these blades give an unfair advantage to the amputee athletes compared to their unaffected competitors. With it being found so far that the blades didn't provide any significant advantage to the amputees compared to these able-bodied runners. So those are limb prosthetics. But when it comes to the different mechanical implants you can get in cyberpunk and sci-fi in general, we also see a fair variety of eye implants. Geordie LaForge from Star Trek TNG, Gakar from Babylon 5, hell, you could even include Mad-Eye Moody from the Harry Potter films, given he's practically a cyborg in the adaptations. Now, this may not surprise you, but there aren't any bionic prosthetic eyes, and this is due to the complexity of eyes in comparison to limbs. First of all, light passes through a clear dome at the front of the eye called the cornea. This refracts the light and focuses it. Then it passes through your pupil to the lens. The lens further focuses the light to hit the retina, which is the photosensitive area at the back of the eye. And this area converts the light into an electronic signal. It's worth noting that at this moment the image produced by the eye would be upside down. The electrical signal from the retina is transported to your brain, which flips the image the right way around. Now of course, there have been a variety of prosthetics for eyes over the years, with the most common for decades being a simple glass eye in place of the regular eye. Though with advances in technology, we were able to make artificial eyes with the invention of the camera. Recent developments have shown that it might be possible to give sight back to the blind through the use of bionic implants. But these, of course, don't look like sci-fi visors. They're more like an artificial retina. Although functional eye replacements are a way off, implants such as these could offer basic vision to those affected with various blindness-related diseases. In this case, the retinal implants are linked to a small camera balanced on a set of glasses. This camera wirelessly transmits the image over to the implant, which then fires an electrode array past the retina to replicate the optic nerve. This system, of course, isn't perfect, as the technology is still relatively new. It allows people to discern light, movement and shape, but it can't perceive colours. And as well as this, it is incredibly expensive, costing as much as $150,000. Now, of course, all of the technologies mentioned so far were driven to help people get back a sense of normalcy after amputations, to help them to perform everyday tasks, recreational activities, and this isn't just limited to prosthetics. And as we're looking at Cyberpunk 2077, let's see what's available to those who want to enjoy what games have to offer. The first gaming controller that was built with disabilities in mind was Nintendo's NES hands-free controller. And although it may look kind of complicated, it works simply especially as all it needed to do was act as a D-pad, A and B buttons. So, in this case, the A and B buttons were controlled by a straw. You blow into it to click the A button, and inhale to click the B button. The directional pad, on the other hand, was controlled by a chin pad. The most popular gaming assistance peripheral is the Xbox Adaptive Controller. This piece of kit was released by Xbox in 2019. Now, while this controller only has two buttons, making it hard to use with most games, it allows disabled gamers to plug in additional large buttons using the 3.0mm ports on the back of the device. There's a significant range of different switches, including switches you can wear to activate, or proximity sensors you don't even need to touch. Using a variety of these, you can put together a full controller, meaning that even the most complex 
Meaning that not... Uh. Meaning that even the most complicated games are not only playable, but even completable, dependent on the disability. So there we go. Although these sci-fi implants may seem outlandish in terms of the real world, advances in technology and 3D printing have made them more and more realistic with each passing year. And if this is what we can do at the moment, what we'll be able to do in the next decade. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, if there's any particular scientific subject or topic that you'd like to see me cover in the future, then please tell me in the comments down below. Or if you'd rather, send me a message directly on Twitter. And if you want to support the channel even further, you could also contribute to my Patreon. As a patron, you'll get behind the scenes access to the creation of all aspects for the science of, including script writing, editing, thumbnail design, and all the assets that I make for the show, as well as being able to vote on what the next Science of video will be. But until then, this has been the Science of Cyberpunk 2077. I'll see you next time.